Okay, so the next question is coming uh, comes in from Robert. First off, I would like to say how much I like Glossika. My question is, what do you need to do to move from the B1 to B2 level, or B1, B2 level to the C1 level? Most of the difference here is not necessarily grammar or syntax. That's the kind of stuff that you should have learned uh, back in the A levels, uh, especially with even all of the verb tenses and, and how the sentences are put together. The major difference between B1 and B2 and C1 is basically the professionalism with how you speak. So uh, with my analysis of languages from around the world, I've gone and, and learned uh, quite a few uh, Aborigine languages. You'll find that the, the customary way of speaking, these languages are, are not used in professional settings. And so there's a, a lack of vocabulary and, and, and there's, you know, they're not used to write, they're not used to uh, write uh, papers or scientific things. Even though they, they may do, they do have scientific words for plants and animals, most of it is, is bot, um, botany and flora and fauna. Um, you're not going to have these languages having the, the capability to express things in, in a more um, you know, empirical or scientific way. And so that's where you're, you're starting to get a big difference between uh, languages and their professionalism with how they communicate and how the rhetoric is, is developed. Most of that rhetoric is developed because languages have uh, developed writing systems and so those writing systems allow the language uh, to be parsed better for people to create better sentences and so when you go into a community where a language is spoken but yet um, they've never uh, learned how to write the language languages even for fluent speakers of those languages are rarely used beyond like a B1 level and so the major difference between a B1 level and a B2 level is just this major expansion of vocabulary and being able to speak in a more concise way, um, better rhetoric, um, better choice of words. In fact, I remember with uh, a specific uh, Aboriginal language that I was working on, I would say that is there a way to communicate in a B2 level in that language? I think that yes, there is, because there was some... When, when you get speakers who can tell you stories and they're able to elaborate and use a lot of uh, complex ideas and words and throw them into that story, I feel like wow, it's getting harder and harder to understand uh, the story that this person is, is telling me. It's, it's almost like my level is not good enough because they're using such a vast amount of vocabulary. Uh, this is like a B2 level in an Aborigine language. And, but you know, to find somebody who can actually tell the story in that way is really, really hard. So I can go around and talk to anybody around there in the village and nobody's going to talk to me like that at a B2 level in that language. It's just, they're, they're just physically not capable of doing it. They just don't use that amount of vocabulary on a regular basis. And even if they could, um, it would just kind of sound out of place. They'd be like, you know, they would only be using that for a specific spot, which is for like telling the story and using this great amount of vocabulary. So that's kind of the big difference. And when you get up into C1 levels, you're talking about, uh, you know, expressions and the way of speaking, your delivery, all of these things go into creating that feel of a C1. As I'm talking to you right now on camera, I'm not even close to using a C1, you know, way of delivery or, or speaking, because if I were to switch to that, it would might be a little bit off-putting for you. Uh, if I was to start using a lot of um, complex terms and, and, and grammatical terms and, and words from linguistics, you know, I would lose my audience. And so it's, it's not always a good idea to speak to somebody in a C1 level because you have to understand who your audience is. Now, if I'm going to go on stage in front of a, a bunch of, um, you know, experts in the field and I need to be using vocabulary that they understand uh, where we can talk about these ideas specifically, then that's where C1 would uh, come play play out. Uh, so if you're a doctor and you're talking in front of you know, at a medical conference and you're not talking to patients, you're talking to other doctors and you're not using the proper medical words, then people will think there's something wrong with your um, with your your background and training in the in the medical field. Uh, you know, if you're a lawyer, the same thing. If you're not citing the, the, the legal code in the right way, and you're not speaking in the right way, people are going to say, you don't sound like a lawyer. You know, you should be speaking at the C1 and C2 levels. 
uh, for those specific professions. And so that's where the, the major difference is. Do, does the average la uh, language learner need a C1 capacity in that language? I, I don't think that that is actually necessary. It just depends on what field you're going into. So, you know, if you're a if you're a scientist in a specific field and you're going to Germany to work, you know, maybe that C1 in German is going to be really important for you uh, so that you know all that vocabulary, you're able to function uh, with that level. 